Shabbat Shalom to the 12 tribes of Israel and to the believing Gentiles. My name is Brother Mark, and I wanted to welcome everybody into another Holy Shabbat day and to come before the family to speak about this season we're in of Feast of Dedications and what that means for us as Gentiles. Uh, before we go on, though, let's give all honor, all glory, and all praise to the Most High Yah and His only begotten Son, Yehoshua HaMashiach. And in order to do that, we are going to read to Feel Yehovah which is the Lord's Prayer, can be found in Matthew, the 6th chapter, 9-13. through 13. Today we are going to be reading out of the Hebrew Israelite Scriptures, the foreign year edition of slavery, with an enhanced apothecary in it, which has, of course, the books of the Maccabees. So, to feel like Yehovah. Avinu, Sheba Shemayim, Yikwada Shemeka, Tabo Malkuteka, Yeyase Rasonka, Keashir, Kebashamayam, Gamba Aris, Tela Nu, Ed Lekum, Zarkenu Hayom, Umakala Nu, Ed Kobutenu, Kamoshe Gam, Anaknu, Makau Nu, Lehayavenu, Altavienu, Lede Nisayon, Eli Hatsalenu Mehara, Kishauka, He, Hamalku, Wahagavura, Wahatafeda, Leome, Olamin Bashem Yehoshua. So family, it is very important that we take not just this feast day, but each and every feast day, we need to take some time and reflect during that season and what the Most High Yah is asking from us and what He seeks for us to be doing during these various seasons. Now, uh, the Feast of Dedications, while it is not in Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, it's in the first book of Maccabees, chapter 1 through 4. What we do know about the Feast of Dedications is it follows in the same pattern, in the same kind of blueprint that the Feast of Tabernacles does, which is it's an eight-day celebration. The first and the last day are Holy Shabbat days. So we're heading into the last, the eighth day right now, and I want to bring forth a message to the Gentiles and edify the Gentiles about this season and the things that we need to be focused on. So to do that, we're going to have to read in the book of Maccabees, chapter 1, and we're going to look at a little bit about what happened and what the Greeks did to the Yehudim and to the temple, and why we as Gentiles have to reflect on what those Greeks did and why it's significant for us even today, and why we have to take it so seriously about what they have done um, through history. Because just as the children of Israel are asked to reflect on the sins of their forefathers and foremothers and to change and become set apart, and to return unto the Most High Yah, we are asked to do the same thing, which is we have to repent, we have to reject, and we have to rebuke our forefathers and our foremothers for the wickedness that they have done so that we can atone properly for our sins and that we can know our proper place within the big picture. So in order to do that, let's look at the first book of the first Maccabees. The book of the first Maccabees, and this is Nehemiah. Of course, Yequesquiel, Yehudith, Sirach, the book of the Maccabees. So, we're going to read some of the first chapter and try to glean some insight into the things that we should and shouldn't be doing. So, this is the book of the first Maccabees, chapter 1, verse 1. And it happened after that, Alexandros, son of Philippos, the Macedonian, who came out of the land of Kittim, has smitten Dariush, king of the Persians and the Medes, that he reigned in his steed, the first over Yawan. So this Alexandros is Alexander the Great. So let's read on. Verse 2. And made many wars, and won many strongholds, and slew the kings of the earth, and went through the ends of the earth, and took spoils of many, many nations, insomuch that the earth was quiet before him, whereupon he was exalted, and his heart was lifted up. So after Alexandros took out the Persians and the Medes, this ushered in the Greek rulership in the Greek Empire. But that did not stop Alexandros. He continued on and conquered much of the known world and bringing many kings under his um, rulership and, and made them tributaries to himself. But the most important thing, let's look at this, is that he was exalted and his heart was lifted up. He exalted himself and his heart was lifted up. The only person that we're supposed to exalt and lift up is Yehoshua HaMashiach because he is our head. He is our Adonai. 
and he's the son of the Most High Yah. That's the only person that we should be exalting. And we should not be lifting our hearts up in pride because that we think that we've done something good or that we have done something honorable. When, as we can see, what Alexandros did was he conquered the known world. He, 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 he was not satisfied with what was given to him. He felt like he needed to take more and get more. And this is a common theme amongst the heathen is that we as heathens, and I'm including myself in this because I was a heathen at one point, there are things that we have to learn not to do. And one of them is exalting ourselves and believing that we are superior, believing that we can do what we want, when we want, and how we want. And it's our way, and that's it. Because there's no Most High here. It says He was exalted and His heart was lifted up. So we have to check ourselves and make sure that we as Gentiles are not still operating within a heathen mentality, which is exalting ourselves and believing that we are, are the key to all this and that we are the ones that are, are making our life great and that we are the ones that are that are achieving these blessings on our own. And we're not. We, we, ha we are at the mercy of the Most High Yah. And we must continue to give Him all reverence in the name of His only begotten Son, Yehoshua, if we want to continue to receive our blessings because we do none of this without Him. And, and Jeremiah says He knew us before we were even in our womb. Our mother's womb. Our life and our existence and our being is owed to the Most High Yah so that we should not be exalting ourselves in any manner. Verse 4. And he gathered a mighty stronghold, a strong host, and ruled over countries and nations and kings who became tributaries unto him. 5. And after these things he fell sick and perceived that he should die. Wherefore he called his servants such as were honorable had been brought up with him from his youth and parted his kingdom among them while he was yet alive. So Alexandros reigned 12 years and then he died. And his servants bear rule every one in his own place. And after his death, they all put crowns upon themselves. So did their sons after them many years and evils were multiplied in the earth. So as you see, Alexander gave and divided his kingdom up amongst the most honorable amongst his servants. Yet as soon as he passes from this earth, verse 9, all of them decide to start putting crowns on their head, creating many nations, many kingdoms across the world. So again, these Gentiles followed right in the path, excuse me, these heathens, because they're not Gentiles until they really, truly, in my opinion, this is my opinion, they're not Gentiles until they come into the knowledge of the Most High Yah. Until then, they are just heathens. So these heathens followed in the same steed as what Alexander did and exalted themselves and put crowns upon their heads when we know that, one, we receive our crowns from Yehoshua. Two, the only crown that's the most important is the crown that resides on the king's head, which is Yehoshua HaMashiach. So whether it be that we're getting our crowns from him or is the very crown that sits on his head, we are not to be putting crowns upon ourselves. We are not to crown ourselves with glory. Yet they, they, they still exalting themselves and lifting their hearts up in pride, crowning themselves and, and granting themselves such power and influence. So again, during this season, we have to ask ourselves, are we being in the vein of Alexandros and those servants that came, came um, that those honorable servants that were given parts of his kingdom? Verse 10, and there came out of them a wicked man, Antichus, surname Hamephaor, son of Antichus, the king, who had been a hostage at Rome, and he reigned in the hundred and thirty and seventh year of the kingdom of the Greeks. So family. We first were introduced to a heathen named Alexander, Alexandros, who conquered much of the known world. And now we are meeting another heathen named Antichus, who will bring harsh rulership over the children of Israel, which we'll see shortly. He's going to rule very harshly. And we have to ask ourselves, are we walking in the spirit of Antichus? Are we walking in the spirit of Alexandros as heathens? Or are we walking in the steed of the Mosiah, Yehoshua? in the law, statutes, and commandments.